Welcome to Framework Fortune and welcome back, Framework Fortune community. It's time for your daily Monday through Friday stock market episode of The Last Rip, where we take a look at the top gainers on the NASDAQ and NYSE. But before we dive into that, it's also time for another giveaway. We are celebrating passing 6,000 subscribers. Thank you, everybody in the Framework Fortune community for doing your part, hitting those like buttons, commenting down below, sharing the videos. That all helps grow this community. And from all of us here at Framework Fortune Holdings, we appreciate you guys so much. So we're going to give back to the community. There are directions for the giveaway, and I will be telling you a little bit later in the video. Yeah, I had to do it that way. But... I want to keep spammers out, and they usually don't watch after the first minute. So stick around for the video and make sure you get that information of how to sign up. And there's also another giveaway on the Very Merc Fortune crypto channel as well. But into the NASDAQ, RAPT. This was a big runner today, moving from 26 all the way up to 42. Actually, here in after hours, it's ran up to 52.60. So a very big move on this. Very low float, 25 million shares. Looks like they did a common offering earlier and it's still pushing up. They also have positive results on a some type of dermatitis treatment, so a skin treatment, I think. That's going to bring in some hype, positive news, good PR, and it just made this thing go and go and go. You can see right here on the 15-minute, it just exploded over all the EMAs and just held above the 20 all day. So, I mean, pretty much all you had to do on this was just take an entry somewhere near the 20 on the 15 minute and you could ride this bad boy all the way up. A very nice run there. Next we have ENOB. This one came out with some PR early in the morning. They had a, looks like, uh, acceptance of some type of HIV treatment or something like that. That's definitely going to bring in some investor hype. And you can see it brought in all the investor hype and pre-market ripping from uh, about 450 all the way up here to this 1299 area at market open and then it just dumped off but after that big of a rip I'm, I'm not surprised to see it sell off that much mdia this just had a gap up in pre-market ran from 377.85 no news so just a pre-market pump it looks like on the 15 minute it was already bullish back here uh, a couple of days before this rip so don't not sure what it was maybe it was investors that like this company who knows could be the social media hype itos they got an agreement to co-develop and co-commercialize something crazy i don't know what those words mean but agreements are good it means they're going to be working with another company to make some money and it just had a big explosive move in pre-market from 21 up to 35 after that news and just sold off the rest of the day AXVL, they've got some type of drugs for Alzheimer's, which were featured in a journal. That's always a good thing in the medical world. Another good PR there. And it just, same thing as the one that just got over the EMAs early and just rode right up the 20 all day on the 15 minute here. NRBO, this is a strange one. You can see this thing just had no volume at all and then exploded up, got halted. Moved from about 350 all the way up to 657, but below all indicators, still bearish. It did close above the 20 and the 50, but not any really reason for this to do this other than maybe this low. We've seen a lot of stocks hitting lows of the year that have been having some explosions back up. LKCO, no news there. Looks like it got some started getting action yesterday a little bit and then had a big pre-market explosion. People buying right here at open in pre-market, 3 a.m. There was a couple of places you could have got some bounces there off of some off of that 50 there and then the 20 there, but not a whole lot of movement really. This thing just kind of exploded up and then moved sideways. TSP, no news on it. It's been riding up the last couple of days. So just looking like this IPO'd recently and just getting uh, some more momentum 
So this must be a pretty decent IPO. Breaking over pretty much that $40 area where it IPO'd at and now it's moving up. Could be one to continue to keep on watch. It held its gains. It's still actually above the 20 days. So C-A-N. I'm not seeing any news on this. A couple of months ago, this exploded up and has been selling off since. Uh, it just kind of bounced back up to that 200 and the 50 day there, but got hold up, held up at both of them. You see right across 11, there's some resistance, and that's right where it's at. It could be one to keep an eye on tomorrow, because those are only at $12. So if it opens up, breaks over 11, and uh, moves up to 12 through pre-market, we could see this continue to move. So XYF looks like they've got uh, Wednesday earnings. So got a little hype from that today. A little move from 728.49. Uh, not a lot of volume on it though. QD got some type of earnings overview, which it was pretty much just kind of going sideways, consolidating here, and uh, got a nice move up. The 20 breaking back over the 200. You see, it did it like when it did it right here. It got a nice pop up, so it's doing it again. Another nice pop up. Uh, this this time to some new recent highs of about 253. So that's another one you could possibly keep an eye on. This is the Asian ADR, yeah, um, for a possible swing up to $3. AMC, I actually traded today. That's right, I traded a meme stock. As much as I talk trash about them and as much as I troll the Wall Street bets, guys, I took a trade on AMC, but I saw a good opportunity to jump in here. I was a little late to get to streaming, but I saw this move and saw it come back down right above that 20 Got in right around that area at 54.39 and then rode it up to 57 and sold up here when it started coming back down. It gotten a little ways off of that 20 day and every time it does that, it pulls back down. It's off there, pulled down, off there, pulled down, off again. So of course I expected to pull down and it eventually did and then it bounced off again. So just making the same pattern over and over again. Get a nice little rip there, $3 a share. There's only five shares though, so I made $16, but $3 a share is still good, no matter what, so I will take it. PYR, the CEO is presenting at a virtual investor conference, so that maybe is getting a little hype. Uh, the stock is a little low there, 20 crossing back over the 50 and just testing that 100 day. Not really anything significant there, but you know what is significant? winning a hundred dollar giveaway for the 6k framework fortune celebration so i know i know the link is down in the description the first line of this description click on that you sign in with your email or google and then sign into the competition and then we will draw a random winner signups last until next monday night and then the winners will be announced in two separate videos one for this channel for this giveaway and one for the $50 Bitcoin giveaway on the Framework Fortune crypto channel. So you have two chances to win if you enter both contests, but you do have to be subscribed. So make sure you hit that subscribe button because these giveaways are meant to go back to the loyal Framework Fortune community who is supporting the channel, both channels, the networks of communities that we have, and it's to give our thanks back to them. But back to the stock. So... DAO uh, looks like this is another Asian stock uh, just continuing on an uptrend it's been on a nice uptrend over the past five days uh, just riding up these EMAs once it crossed over there just continued to move maybe these Asian ADRs could have some good swing trade potential because all of them are lower than the previous prices and they're starting to push up this one is uh, close to crossing over the 20 on the, over the 50 and the price is actually closed right above that 200 so definitely could be one to keep an eye on and then WNW this is one of those consumer discretionary stocks uh, low of the year just a couple of weeks ago 614 had a little bounce today but nothing really significant there to talk about and last but not least we'll take a look at the SPY the SPY has done it again it has hit new highs proof me to be wrong again about this drop that I keep saying is coming but as long as they're continuing to pump the market and the feds are doing what they're doing, I don't know how long this can last. Apparently, they can keep it up for a very long time. 
this has been going on a very long time, but this move is just getting too steep. When you look at it on a weekly chart to look back, you can see since 2008, the housing market crash, the stock market has been on an overall picture on a huge move up. It usually does not move this insane. You look back here, the only support that it really has is these two previous highs at 156 way down here. So there's just a lot of room that it could fall. And you can see these EMAs are really spread out. So just looking at the S&P 500 from the EMA strategy, this is the time where you really think about selling. So I don't know. It could continue to go up for a while, but at some point we have to have some type of correction to make this chart look the way it's supposed to look naturally. This is not natural whatsoever. Oh, and I almost forgot the no, the NOVN trade that I took. NOVN had a nice pop this morning. I got in the sideways consolidation. It made a pretty much just a sideways triangle. And then when it couldn't break out, it cracked. And I got out of there, I think around 18-ish. I don't know, but I, don't, I didn't have a lot of shares of it. So it was only a $10 loss. So with the $10 loss and the $16 gain, I'm a little bit up on the day, but crypto market making a big rebound and I'm making some money there too. Appreciate everybody joining me as always. Stay safe out there. Be sure to sign up for that giveaway. Until next time.